Overflow City Church, it is so good to see you. It is my delight to spend these next few moments with you. First off, before we start, I just want to say welcome to any of our first-time guests or first-time watchers. If you are, we'd love to connect with you. And the best way to connect with you is by texting OVERFLOW to 94 Zero, 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 and we would love to send you a free gift and just let you know that we appreciate you hanging out with us today. And also, too, if, if you're watching today or maybe you're a, a regular watcher, if you would just hit that subscribe button so you can stay apprised on everything that's happening and the newest release of content that we have. Uh, lastly, go ahead and hit the share button as well too, to make sure as many people are, uh, are hearing the Word of God and it's reaching and impacting as many lives as possible. And so lastly, our vision here at Overflow City Church is for people to encounter God, to discover purpose, and to make a difference. And here uh, we have started a new series on living in the presence of God, living in the presence of God. And we launched off into our series last week. And and the prayer of this series is for people to step into a life-giving, presence-filled life with Jesus Christ. And the title of today's message is simply The Revealed Presence of God. That God is a God that deeply desires to reveal Himself through His presence. And that's what our desire is for, is to see God's presence revealed in each and every single one of our lives. And we're going to look into that this week and, and, and through this talk and in the, in the talks that we have coming up is really looking at how we can experience and know God at a deeper, more intimate level through His presence. You know, this past week was a pretty challenging week for me. It was uh, uh, had some disappointments. There were some things that I had been uh, working for and striving for and hoping for and praying for, and that just didn't end up working out the way that I would thought it would work out. Um, uh, and I had an option to make in this time, and maybe you've experienced this yourself, in this time of discouragement, maybe this time of disappointment. I, I had a decision to make. Either I can stay in that discouragement, and disappointment, or I can get into the presence of God. Uh, I want you you to just go ahead and comment on that in in the comment section and write, get into the presence of God. I believe that getting into the presence of God will change your life forever. And so what I began to do is uh, I took my phone and, and I had some worship songs on it and I took my Bible and I began to play some worship songs. I laid down on the floor and I began to read scriptures and I begin to worship. I begin to worship and read scriptures over my situation and over my life. And, and it was just a, a period of time until I began to experience a peace and the calmness come over my mind, come over my heart. It was a supernatural presence of God that gave me a peace that I otherwise would not have and a calmness that came over me that I did not have just moments ago. I, I would love to say that after I got up off of the floor of my time of encountering and experiencing God, that my circumstances changed. But guess what? what? They didn't. My circumstances were exactly the same. But I tell you what happened after experiencing the presence of God. I changed. See, uh, it changed my mindset. It changed my heart. It changed my attitude that being in God's presence did something transformative inside of me. Though we pray and contend for things to change outside of us, that's absolutely nothing's wrong with that. But what I'm saying is that getting in God's presence, whether it changes your situation or whether it doesn't, it always changes your you. He always changes you. And so maybe you're experiencing something like that. Maybe you're experiencing a disappointment. Maybe you're experiencing a frustration. Maybe there was a wedding that you're planning and now this whole uh, COVID-19 thing has just messed up all your wedding plans. Or, or maybe it's a job search that you have. And, or, or maybe it's just tension within your workplace. Or, or maybe there's family uh, uh, situations going on. You have kids running around the house and now you are a homeschooler and you have children in the house all day long and you're working your job. And and that stress is kind of mounting in this time, or maybe it's financial, maybe it's any one of those things, but for whatever the situation is, the presence of God is alive and active and working in your heart to bring transformation. And so I want to look at a few observations today in, in, in this talk right now. And what we are going to start with the revealed presence of God. That's my first point is the revealed presence of God. Uh, the omnipresence, the omni, omni means all, omnipresence of God means that God is 
everywhere at all times. Psalm 139, 7 and 8 says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Uh, uh, the psalmist David is talking about God being everywhere at all times. God is in Alaska at the same time. He's in Hawaii. He's in Mars. He's in uh, California. He's in downtown Silver Spring. He's everywhere at all times. There's no escaping God's omnipresence. He's all places at all times. And then there's the indwelling presence of God. And this is seen in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Uh, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So there is an omnipresence of God, God all places at all times. And for the believer, there is the indwelling presence of, through the Holy Spirit that's in the life of the believer. And what we're going to be looking at today is looking at the revealed presence of God. And so as a believer, God's presence is in us. But there are times when God goes from being everywhere and even inside of us to being right here where God is experienced. Uh, And so uh, experiencing him simply means that God's presence is realized. The reality of God is more directly known. It's more authentically known. It's more intimately known. It's more effectively known. So in other words, it's experiencing God's presence heightens our reality of him in our lives. Experiencing God's presence heightens God's presence and reality in our lives. Psalm 145, 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. It doesn't mean that God is some in some distant land, some far off place. It means that He is near and that He reveals Himself in a way that's special that you can experience and that you can know Him. I remember doing a, an event uh, a speaking event in, in Seattle a few years back, and uh, there was a young lady there. I, I saw her. She had come back the first day, the second day, the third day. And on the third day, she had come up to me saying, oh my goodness. She says, God is in this place. She said, I experienced what God is like. She said, I have grown up Muslim my whole life. And she said, in this time, in these last days, I have experienced the presence of God. I now know who the true living God. It is the God of Jesus Christ. That woman had a moment encounter, a moment of reality of who God was. And that should be the prayer of each and every single one of us. God, make yourself known to us in a deeper and more realer way. And God, make yourself known to the people of this household, to the people of this city, and to the people of this nation. That is the revealed presence of God. And so as we look from last week, and if you miss it, I encourage you to go ahead and catch up on it. Uh, From the beginning, God's desire was to be in mankind's presence. His desire was to be in mankind's presence by looking at the life of Adam and Eve, how you get this picture of God being with them. And you see that sin entered the world and created a barrier. There was a barrier now as a result of that. And how does God, a holy God, have relationship with a sinful people? And we saw one of the ways that, uh, that, that God addressed this, and that's through the tabernacle or the tent of Moses, as it's called. And it was a, a established as a system of worship so that God can be with his people with their current conditions the way that they were. Uh, the word tabernacle means dwelling place. So God's presence would literally, de- would literally dwell with the people of Israel as they were wandering through the desert through what God established through this tent system where it was a tabernacle, a tent that was set up with different furniture, different pieces of worship that they would use, that God would use that to rest upon that. And so it spoke of, listen to this, it spoke of God's presence with his people. God's presence meeting with his people, to protect his people, to provide for his people, to love for his people, and to lead his people as well too. And so we see this being a type and a shadow, meaning it is something that speaks of a future event of something that would happen in the days to come. It would speak of Jesus being the ultimate fulfillment of this tabernacle that we see here uh, in the Old Testament through the book of Exodus. And so my second point today is the revealed presence of God as seen through the life of Jesus. 
the revealed presence of God seen in the life of Jesus. And now we have a picture of what God's presence looks like revealed on earth. And so uh, in, in John 1.14, uh, this passage speaks of Jesus. Uh, it says the word, if you notice, the word W in word is capitalized. It's speaking of Jesus. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came, uh, who came from the Father. You see, Jesus Christ is both fully God and fully man and came to earth. This is what this passage is talking about, that God came and clothed himself with human skin in Jesus Christ and lived and walked this world. And so the point that I want you to, to really uh, anchor your heart on right now is this word talks about the word Speaking of Jesus, and he says, he made his dwelling place among us. He made his dwelling among us. And now when we look at the Greek translations, it just simply means that the, the scriptures were originally written in Greek. And when we transliterate them to English, some of the descriptive words are lost in there. And so when researching this passage, this word, uh, this phrase, made his dwelling among us, listen to this, is actually he pitched his tabernacle, and pitched his tent among us. Isn't that awesome? It's talking about Jesus coming, and he is pitching a tent and tabernacling. He's living, and he's, he's presencing. Uh, he lived in a tent among us. And so for the Jewish mind reading this text, immediately it would hit their mind and say, hey, when this text is talking about Jesus tabernacling among us, it's talking about and speaking about the Old Testament tabernacle that was spoke of now being fulfilled, walking and living and breathing in the life of Jesus. And so, again, we spoke of the tent uh, of uh, uh, tent of meeting or the tabernacle that we looked at in, in the Old Testament where God would meet was a place where God would meet his people, would protect for his people, would provide for his people, would care and lead for his people as well, too. And so I want you to get this. I want you to, this is so important to make this connection, that Jesus Christ is the walking manifestation of the Old Testament tabernacle on earth. Isn't that awesome? That Jesus Christ is the walking revealed expression of the tabernacle that was spoken of in, in Exodus 40. He was one that, uh, that we can touch him, that Jesus was the expression that we can feel, that we can see, that we can experience all these things in the person of Jesus. And what's uh, so awesome about this is, is that do you feel the longing of a loving God wanting to make himself known to his people? Do you feel, do you feel that, 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 that loving God wanting to reveal, wanting to make himself known to his people? John 14, 9 and 10 says, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is, listen to this, Jesus speaking, it is the Father living in me who is doing the work. I want you to make this connection as well too, that Jesus is saying, when you see me, you see my Father. Jesus was the illustration of what the Father God is like, what, how he loves, how he relates with people. If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Why don't you go ahead and write that in the comment section. When you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. When you've seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. This is so awesome. I remember, I must have been about maybe seven or eight, and my dad and I were walking in the mall one day, and, and as we're walking, we're just kind of talking and hanging out, and a lady stops us. She says, oh my gosh, whoa, just abruptly, and we're kind of looking at each other like, do you know this lady? I don't know this lady, and he's looking at me. She's, she's looking at him, and I'm looking at my dad, and it was just a very awkward situation. She goes, wow. She says, you guys are, is that your dad? And she said, is that your son? And my dad's like, yeah, this, this is my son. And she says, you guys look just alike. I saw you from, from a distance away. The way you talk, the way you're walking, you guys must be uh, father and son. 
And she, as people kind of looking and staring at this point, she's like, wow, that is amazing. And then she just walks off and we're kind of just stuck staring at each other. And it hit me. It said, if, if an earthly father can look like his son and his son can look like his father, how much more does the son Jesus look like his father in earth, in heaven? So do you see that connection that's made there? That connection of when you see Jesus, you see the father as well. And so in Luke 14, or Luke 4, verses 18, it says, 18 and 19, speaking of Jesus, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind and to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This was a prophecy from Isaiah that Jesus was reading in the synagogue. And he was reading this referring to himself. And and it spoke of how Jesus came and when he lived, he brought freedom. When Jesus came, he brought healing. When Jesus came, he brought uh, freedom from oppression, those that are oppressed by spirits and other heaviness that they're experiencing. That Jesus came and brought favor. Jesus came and brought wisdom. Jesus came and brought counsel. That you would see that his mission and his mandate on earth consisted of all these things. And that he walked and he lived in this place. And, And that is what the presence of God revealed looks like through the life of Jesus. Where Jesus went, healing went. Where Jesus went, freedom went. Where Jesus went, wisdom went. Where Jesus went, guidance went. Where Jesus went, all these things went. And so we see that through the life of Jesus, what the revealed presence of God looks like. I want to look at my third point, my third observation here is that the revealed presence of God experienced. We looked at the revealed presence of God. We looked at the revealed presence of God uh, seen through the life of Jesus, what God's presence like, so that God's presence on earth isn't like some abstract idea, but we see it in the life of Jesus, what his presence on earth looks like. And now for you and I to live in the presence of God, how do we then experience this presence here and now? And so I want to look at Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that you so that Christ may dwell listen to this in your hearts through faith and i pray that you being rooted and established in love the the new living translation says Christ will make his home in your heart i want you to catch this progression we see the progression of of God in the garden with Adam and Eve. And then you see God making his presence manifest in the tent. And then we see God taking another step closer through Jesus living on earth. And and, and we see this and then God, listen to this, God decided he wanted to be even closer to you than he was at that time. He says, I want to be so close to you. I want to dwell in your heart. This text says that uh, he has made your heart home, that God could have lived and dwelled anywhere, but he chose to live in those that called upon his name and received him in their life. He's chose to make your heart home. I want you to go ahead and type that in the comment section. Say, he's made my heart his home. He's made my heart his home. From the very beginning, you have to see God's relentless pursuit after mankind. God's relentless pursuit after you. Sitting here watching this after your heart, after you. God's pursuing you even right now, even in this moment. See, the Holy Spirit's home is now your heart when you give your life to Jesus Christ. You have a fully engaged, fully present Father. He is not accessible only on Sundays. He's not accessible only on Christmas or Easter or special holidays or when there's crisis or when you're doing things great and you're just really crushing it in your faith. He's not just there with you when you're doing all your devotionals. No, he is with you 24-7. He never closes his doors. He never turns his back on you. He is there for you. And he's decided to make your heart his home through his precious and his Holy Spirit. And so now when we look at experiencing this, I just want to look at two areas where we can experience God 
in this place. And one is experiencing God through His Word. You experience God through His Holy Word. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. Again, that's capitalized, speaking of Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We look at Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Listen, when we read, we, we don't read the Bible for information. We read the Bible for revelation of the person of Jesus. It's not a textbook that you read. This is a, a, a book that, that you don't read. It's actually a book that reads you. So you see, God and his word are inseparable. That when you're in the presence of God's word, you are in the presence of God. Uh, that something powerful happens when you begin to read the Word of God. Something powerful happens. But it all depends on a few things. One is that you have to understand that this is relational. That this book is not a textbook. This is a relational book that God speaks to you through this book and that you speak to God through this book, through your personal relationship. The the second is that this book is directional. Are you reading this word or God's word for information? Are you reading it for enlightenment? Or are you reading it to submit, to yield your life to? Are you reading it that it may lead the course in the direction of how you spend your money, how you handle uh, relationships, how you're a husband or wife, how you raise your kids, what type of business person that you are? Are you allowing God's word to lead and direct your life? It's directional. Last is positional. It causes you to submit your emotions and your attitude to the attitudes that's released here in this passage of Scripture. A lot of times we don't put value to God's Word so it has no value in our life. Uh, It says, uh, uh, Jesus said to the Pharisees, you've made the Word of God of no effect. It is possible to make God's Word of no effect in your life when you don't receive it as such, uh, as a book of not just words, but a book of words from a God who loves you. Uh, I remember a story of a pastor uh, telling me uh, that he was in a class when he was in a, uh, he was going to university. He was in a class with his girlfriend, which is now his wife. And he was saying how the professor, it was a secular university, and the professor was quoting scripture a few times throughout, throughout the lecture. And they got kind of excited. They were, they were, uh, believe, they were Christians. And, and so they stopped the pastor after, or this, they stopped the professor afterwards. And they asked him, they said, hey, that was a great lecture that you gave. By the way, are you a Christian? We noticed that you're quoting some of the scriptures. And he kind of looked back at them and he said, he started laughing. He said, no way. He says, I don't believe in any of that stuff. And they were perplexed. Like, how could you know that much scripture and not be a Christian? He said, he said, no, I only study the the word of God just so I can uh, uh, argue with my brother, just so I can beat my brother with debates. But I had no intent on believing anything that that book says. And it hit me that just because you know the word of God doesn't mean you have a personal relationship with God. See, this book is relational. It's transformational. And it should be a launching pad into the presence of God that every time you open this book, it should be a launching point for God. It should be a launching point into revelation into who Jesus is in your life. He's always speaking to us through this. And so the, one, the, the first way is we experience God through his word. The second is we experience God through a lifestyle of worship. We experience God through a lifestyle of worship. Uh, Psalm 104 says this, enter, listen to this, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Here, thanksgiving and praise and entering and gates. Do you hear that? And, and so we, we are open up into this revelation here that, that, that thanksgiving and praise is a key that unlocks the gate into the presence of God. Oftentimes when we live a thankless life, we live a presenceless life. If we live a praiseless life, we live a presenceless life as well too. 
and that we're given here a key into accessing God's presence by simply being aware of what he's done, by thanking him, by praising him, by even do it right now. Just go ahead and thank God and just begin to worship God and begin to praise God for who he is. Go ahead in the comment section, just begin to praise God for what he's done in your life. Just begin to thank him. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. And as you begin to thank God, you become, you become more aware of his presence and he begins to then reveal his majesty to you. You know, we have a, a leadership team meeting and every leadership team meeting that we have for Overflow City Churches, we open it up, not with strategy, not with plans, not, not with any whiteboard. We open it up with thanksgiving and praise for what God has done in our life and in our church. Why? Because we want to have a meeting based upon the presence of God and not based upon the plans of man. And so you can do that for your business, for your home, for your relationship, just begin to thank God and begin to experience His loving presence in your life. I, I did a trip to uh, Colombia a, a few years back in Med Medellin, Colombia, and I led a group of missionaries out there, and they were pretty excited. It was a group of about six or seven, and they're excited. We we're pumped to go out. I was leading them. I was going to share the word, and they were going to do the ministry time and, and, and also minister to, to the folks there as well. And so the pastor comes and he picks us up, and remember, they're amped, they're pumped up, and this pastor, from the moment, no, no hit against him, but I'm just stating, stating the, the, the facts. From the time he picked us up to the time he dropped us off was nothing but fearful comments of how the town hated them, how fearful they were about everything that's going on, how the mayor didn't like them, how the church was in utter chaos. He just went on and on and on. I'll be honest with you, but before we got to the church, I was like, man, can you turn this bus around? I want to go back home, either that or I'm trying to solicit one of the other folks that are on the team to share a word saying, brother, do you have a word that you want to share for? Do you, do you have a word that you want to share today? But ultimately we got there reluctantly. I'm not wanting to preach. No one is there wanting to minister. And I go in there and he gives us, we're given the office and I go in the office and the team is there. They're kind of in the corner. They're, they're, they're talking and you know, they're, they're, they're just, we're prepping to go out. And I spend a moment to the side. I just pull to the side and I just begin to thank God. I begin to worship God. I begin to honor God. It says in, in Psalm 22 that God enthrones the praises of his people. As I begin to worship him, something begin to shift and change. And I thought it was just me. I begin to feel excited. I begin to feel faith inject my heart. I'm going out there thinking, man, I cannot wait to see what God does today. I was ready to run out the back door when I got there. Now I'm ready to run to the front and begin to minister the word of God. I turn around. I look at the rest of the team. They're on the ground. They're weeping. They're crying. And they're just worshiping God and just singing just one moment of praise and thanksgiving, how it shifted and change, change the atmosphere. We went up there and we had a mighty time of meeting. People received Christ. People got heal, healed of illnesses in their body. It was a powerful time. Why? Because thanksgiving and praise draws the presence of God into your life. I have an assignment for you, if you will. I, I, I want to challenge you with something. I want you to... Uh, um, to read and experience the Word of God this week. Not facts, but read to experience the person of Christ through your scripture reading. And I want you to, to worship, not to sing songs, but to sing your heart to God. Open your heart. Spend some time with Him. Uh, uh, I shared about my disappointment earlier in the message, and, and, and I experienced that in, in how the presence of God didn't necessarily change my situation, but it changed me. And ultimately, my situation will change as well too. Be it trial, uh, be, it, be it triumph, be it valley, be it mountaintop, be it up, be it down, be it, be, be it anywhere. Uh, that, that's not what's in question. What's in question is, is that, or, or what's being commissioned to you is that you and I desperately need to live in the presence of God. Do it in the morning. Do it in the afternoon. Do it at night and see if your life doesn't change. Jesus paid a hefty price for us on the cross of Calvary and he's given his life for you so that you can enjoy his presence and be led by him, cared by him, provided by him, and protected by him. If you haven't made that decision for Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, friend, I just, I ask you to make that decision. Don't let another minute go by without doing that. I want you to just right now even text uh, 94000, text LIVING to 94000, and we love to pray with you 
on that. Lastly, I just want to pray for you. Lord, I pray over each person that's listened to this that you would impact their heart, that they would experience your presence in a real way like they've never experienced it before. I pray for a deepening hunger and a longing for your presence like they've never seen before. Lord, make yourself known to them. Reveal who you are to them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, love you, and see you soon. Hey, Overflow family, I hope that message blessed you and encouraged you. This is our time of generosity. We're a church that believes in generosity, that God influences and changes the world through generous people. As a result of your generosity, we have seen our grocery outreach ministry expand and impacting the lives of so many people in the downtown Silver Spring area. Not to mention, uh, we are able to uh, uh, supply 50 families from a local elementary school with groceries that otherwise would not have groceries. So I just want to encourage you and let you know that your giving is making a difference and making an impact in a time where need has never been so great. And so we still want to aggressively go after a lot of outreach in the city to continue to make an impact. There's a few easy ways to give for you. Uh, one is texting 84321, which is actually the best way to give. And all gifts on donations are tax deductible. Thank you. Bless you for your generosity and have an amazing day.